Hi, my name is Dana and today I'll be sharing with you some really quick, fun holiday romances that you can binge in the upcoming week because I'm late with this video, so yay! So I really wanted to share, look at this sweatshirt that I got from Inkwell Threads from Black Friday. All I want for Christmas is books. Probably won't get any books because my family clearly knows I don't need any. <laughs> okay, so I went on a binge of holiday romances recently. I read a lot of novellas. I have some older wrecks as well quite a few newer ones. I'm very, very excited for this lineup and I think you're gonna really like them. So I've put this list in the order of like least smutty to smutty, um, but then there's also two historicals at the bottom of the list just so that we can keep the contemporary together. The first recommendation is 10 Blind Dates by Ashley Elston. So this is a YA and it follows Sophie who goes to her grandparents' house for Christmas and she has just had a bad breakup. Her parents are like not <laughs> focused on her because her sister is pregnant and having a baby. So she's kind of feeling really like down in the dumps and her family decides that her like big Italian boisterous family decides that they're going to set her up on 10 blind dates. It's really funny. Some of, they're all betting on this of who will win her heart with their date pick. Some of it is just like for funsies, um, but the entire time she's kind of falling for her cousin's best friend. It's super cute. I, this was like one of my, this was definitely one of my favorite reads of like last Christmas time. And I like am now wanting to reread it after picking this out for this video. Okay, so now we're moving into some of my holiday novella binges. The, this book is Gingerbread Wishes by Tay Russ. It is only 48 pages. I read this via Amazon Alexa reading to me and it was glorious. So if you're a fan of Hallmark Channel Christmas movies, this is one of the perfect books for you. So I feel like this plot will be really similar if you've watched many a Hallmarks. So Eve is assigned to um, this factory, this gingerbread factory by her company and she is wanting to get them to sell. And they are from her hometown so she has to go home for Christmas to get this gingerbread factory that she knows is beloved to sell. Um, it's old by this old lady, Georgia, who is not willing to do that. And Eve ends up in this romance with Georgia's nephew. It's super cute. There's only like one big steamy scene in it. Um, so if you're kind of looking for like less smut, this is an option. And then we have another from Tay Russ. I've read one of her other books before this, but she writes a lot of like novella lengths and they're all really good. Um, so this one is Santa Baby and this is also 32 pages. Um, so this one does also have a hallmarky feel. So Holly, she is very jaded by Christmas, but her sister, to help her sister out, takes her, it was a son or a daughter, I don't remember, it's not important, to go see Santa. The Santa is actually like not the Stan Santa who's supposed to be there. He's actually one of the owners of the photography studio. The Their Santa quit or like didn't show up, so he has to do it. He ends up flirting with her. They end up going out on a date. They have sexy times. It's really quick, really fast. It's only 30 pages, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was super cute. And like another, like I just want something to like get me through the Christmas time, you know? And this is like another one. If like you have a crazy family, you want to read it at like the holiday dinner table. 32 pages, man, you could do it. So the next one is Santa's Helpers by Shay Sanders. So this is 66 pages. I feel like I have a lot of like mall Santa book recs on this and what can I say? They're good. Um, so this one is 66 pages. So about double the length of the last one. And so this is a second chance romance. So the heroine um, is a divorcee and she ends up meeting Santa who was their like high school sweetheart. And she is taking her kids to see Santa. They end up rekindling their friendship. 
she gets invited by him to like take up the torch of being a Santa's helper when someone calls out sick and they end up having a really steamy but cute holiday weekend while they discuss their like feelings on life. Um, obviously again this one would be older heroine and second chance romance so it was really cute. And I think this one came out like literally December 4th. So I remember looking at like there were only eight other people who'd read it and I was like that's bizarre. <laughs> the next one I like raved and raved about in my Thanksgiving weekend reading vlog and this is Santa Daddy by Kira Andrews. So this is a mall Santa. So <laughs> um, this one's 115 pages. Very long. Um, so this follows Hunter. He is just out of college. He needs a job. He gets hired as a Santa elf. Um, and at the mall, the Santa is Nick. Nick owns a Christmas tree farm. He's also, um, I don't know if they were married, but he's, his partner passed away um, in a pretty traumatic way, um, being like an accident and he was trying to save someone. So Nick is very hardened. He doesn't like to people. He doesn't talk much. Um, and um, Hunter gets kind of roped into going to help and work at Nick's Christmas tree farm and by circumstances ends up snowed in with him. Things get hot and heavy. There's a lot of like daddy kink in this so if that's not your thing it's not your thing um, but it worked for me and it's not always my thing either so I really liked it. It was super sweet and I am now really interested in checking out more of Kira's work. Okay, and then we have like the shortest book on this list, and that's The Hook Up Before Christmas by Phyllis Bourne. This is 26 pages. I've seen her book Feud go around a lot. I know, I think it's like Alyssa Cole's, one of her favorite books. Um, and this one is super short. It's a happy for now, so if that's not your thing, totally get it. Um, this follows Toy, who she, <laughs> it's Christmas. She's, you know, feeling it. So she decides to go to her ex's and have a booty call and shows up at her ex's house and he's not there and it's like this other guy who's just like there so she doesn't know what's going on she decides to go to her car and her car doesn't turn on so the guy's like do you need some help do you want to come in like are you okay and they end up having sex and it's great um they have sex it's not like this is a spoiler it's 26 pages but obviously it's not like a forever in love type of moment after that they decide to meet up after Christmas and New Year's and see each other again and go on a date so it's very cute oh my god now we're getting to my favorite book on this list that is so amazing <laughs> um so clocking in at a whopping 56 pages and I gave it five stars <laughs> so this is The Naughty List by Ellie Mae McGregor. Um, she, this is her pen name for the bookstagram um, bisexual book nerd. I saw a lot of people talking about this book and then I read it and I was like, wow, I am obsessed. And like, I need Ellie Mae McGregor to write everything else. So I am so ready. Um, so this follows Kate, who she's in the middle of getting divorced. It's Christmas Eve. Her kids are with on her with her husband, ex, soon to be ex husband, on a cruise. She's by herself. She's feeling lonely. She's reading some romance novellas on her Kindle, by the fire. She falls asleep. She's woken by Santa, Nikolai, who is like, "Wow, this is a beautiful woman. He's a beautiful woman." <laughs> and so <laughs> they end up having sex, and she thinks it's a dream, until he then realizes she's dr thinking this is a dream. And then we have what I think is the best part about this book, the overwhelming consent that happens. It's just like, obviously this is a bookstagrammer who like is a reviewer and she's just like, I'm going to give the people what they want and it's consent. And I loved it. Um, Kate is also curvy. She's I think late thirties, early forties, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it is some of the best sex scene I have probably read this year. And that's saying something. I love this book so much and I'm going to probably wreck this all year long. I don't care. <laughs> and so then we have the final two books. 
So I did not write the page number of this one, but it's a novella as well. And this is The Mistletoe Mistress by Nicola Davidson. I really enjoyed this. I read this during the Romance Takeover Readathon. Um, so this is a historical romance novella following a heroine who, because of being a sexually active woman, um, has been forced out of her school, orphanage, I don't remember, um, to go travel to a new job. And on the stagecoach, she's told that she has like a hour break. It's only 30 minutes and she gets stuck in this town. So also someone who got stuck in this town is this Viscount? I could be wrong. <laughs> oh my god. I didn't take notes on this one. So that's like, bad form for me. Um, so he's also stuck, but he can't get a room at the inn because he's unmarried and kind of improper and there's only one room left. So she poses as his wife. They stay at the inn. Obviously sexy times occur. There's also a lot of spanking and I enjoyed it. <laughs> um, there was one thing at the end that like ugh, threw me off of it, but overall, if you're looking for a really hot, see me holiday novella, Nicola Davidson is a queen and she's got you covered. And then lastly, I, if you like know me, if you didn't think this was gonna show up in this, like, you're wrong. Like, it's How the Duke Stole Christmas by Anthology by Sarah McLean, Sophie Jordan, Joanna Shoup, and Tessa Dare. So I thoroughly love this. I've read it twice. Um, I'm going to tell you my favorite story probably the Tessa Dare followed by Joanna Shoup, followed by Sarah McLean, followed by Sophie Jordan. But I think they're all really good. So this anthology actually is all connected by one cookie recipe. So they're all <laughs> connected by the same sugar, sugar, shortbread cookie recipe. So Tessa Dares follows Louisa, whose family is about to get evicted from their house. And this duke who owns the house and is selling the house because he wants more money for the land and the estates that he cares about. He's really concerned with taking care of the people who live on his lands and doesn't like London and Mayfair and all of that that comes with it. Um, so she, under circumstances, isn't trying to meet him and convince him, but um, they end up having this whirlwind of a night. He finds out things happen. It was so fun and such like a great Tessa Dare story. Um, Sarah McLean's is a second chance romance. It's like truly haunting, but at the same time, it feels like it could have been longer. It's probably also one of the longest ones in here. I, I love Sarah McLean, you know I do, but this one's, I think I liked it more on the reread, but still, it's just like a book of longing. He's a dope. Ugh. Then we have, um, Sophie Jordan's, which is, um, <laughs> home alone inspired and this girl her family is like vacationing in Scotland she gets left by herself when they're all leaving because a snowstorm's gonna happen she ends up um, going to this duke's uh, manor and then there's some like highland no what is it called highwaymen that are like wanting to come and steal from him um he's like really grunty it's cute but it's not like the greatest and then we have Christmas in Central Park by Joanna Shoup, which ugh, it's so good. So we have a columnist who is actually poor, but writing as like this Ask Abby type of thing where she's giving advice about like, you know, well-to-do women society questions of like what to make for dinner type things. And she works for this newspaper with this column and the new newspaper owner or the newspaper owner, he... Um, is obsessed with the column and he's kind of infatuated with the column and so he tasks her to get like to have this dinner with these investors and she kind of puts up this whole charade, charade of like convincing her best friend to pretend to be her husband and going to this like abandoned house and it's just like absurdity and I love it so much um, and there's probably one of the hottest scenes in this book is in Joanna Shoup's writing so yeah I loved it those are some really quick holiday novellas that you can check out in the next week and fly through, um, you know, 
I think you'll enjoy them because I did. And if you decide to check them out, please let me know either in a comment below or you know you can always DM me on Instagram. I'm happy to hear your love for any of these. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a happy holiday and I'll see you in the next one.